I'm Dr. Philip Landrigan. I'm a pediatrician. I chair the Department of Preventive Medicine in the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, uh, and I run the Children's Environmental Health Center at Mount Sinai, which is a research unit that studies the impacts of pesticides and other toxic chemicals on the health of children. Well, chrome rubber is produced by grinding up old tires, mostly truck tires, to create little pellets. And those pellets are then used in various places around the United States uh, uh, to build uh, uh, playing fields and playgrounds. They're put on children's playgrounds, football fields, track stadiums, um, uh, and, and in many cases they're marketed uh, under such terms as synthetic turf. Well, crumb rubber fields and synthetic turf fields have, have several health hazards. No question that the best documented health hazard of synthetic turf fields is heat. Uh, these, the, the black crumb rubber on a hot summer day can absorb an enormous amount of solar radiation and then radiate it back out. And in the summer months, temperatures of 130, 140 degrees Fahrenheit have been measured uh, three or four feet above the surface of crumb rubber fields on hot afternoons, precisely at the height where a child would be running and playing. And, and it, it is simply very unhealthy for little kids to be running around, or even big kids or adults to be running around and trying to play vigorous sports in temperatures of 130, 140 degrees. So that's the first hazard. The second hazard is that um, uh, these fields contain various chemicals, and the, the chemical hazards will vary from field to field depending upon the precise source of the crumb rubber that goes in. Some have been shown to contain lead. Uh, others contain the synthetic chemicals that go into uh, the, uh, the synthesis of synthetic rubber, things like 1,3-butadiene, which is a proven human carcinogen, or styrene, which is a neurotoxic chemical. And those, the, the butadiene and the styrene can vaporize out of the, of the fields on hot days. Those chemicals can also run off from the fields in, after it rains and, there's, and the rainwater runs out. The toxic chemicals can be uh, in the rainwater runoff and contaminate the nearby environment. There, so there's synthetic fields, rubber, crumb rubber fields have, have lots of problems. Uh, they were introduced uh, in many places to improve drainage. Uh, what happens is fields get, when it rains, water puddles on the fields and then, and then the kids run around and they erode the grass. Um, a much better solution is to, is to build fields that are properly elevated, properly drained, and that are planted with tough uh, species of grass that don't require pesticides, and that's, that's doable. Uh, the, the crumb rubber fields are something that's completely unnecessary, very expensive, and, and, um, and can be avoided. And there's one more aspect of the crumb rubber fields that is not talked about very much, and that's the cost of getting rid of them 10 or 20 years from now when they reach the end of their natural lifespan, uh, cities and towns um, are going to have to pay for the removal of that crumb rubber. They're going to have to treat it as hazardous waste when they remove it. There are going to be very significant costs associated with that which will be stuck to the local taxpayers. Indeed, yeah. So, power of good marketing. Well, it, you know, I think a, a lot of the marketing around crumb rubber fields has, has been very misleading, and um, the companies that are marketing the fields don't talk about the heat hazards, they don't talk about the chemical hazards, they don't talk about the costs that are going to be associated with dismantling the fields when they reach the end of their natural lifespan. There are several levels at which parents can protect their children against crumb rubber fields. The, 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 the most effective approach is to prevent crumb
Crumb River Fields from ever being installed in the first place. And there have been school district after school district across the country where parents have gotten together and raised their voices and prevented the installation of these fields. Uh, of course, parents aren't always successful, and there are plenty of school districts around the country where these fields are already in place. The question is, what's, what's a parent to do there? We all, we all recognize that it's very good for kids to play sports, to run around. It's good for their physical development. It's good for their social development to play team sports. So I think the, the best advice I can give to parents if, if their child is attending a school where a field is already in place is be sure to have the child shower off um, very completely uh, at the end of each time they play on the field to get rid of the traces uh, of the chemicals on their body and, and minimize exposure. But I, I wouldn't go so far as to say forbid your child to play on the fields because then that cuts the kid off from uh, all the social interaction of, of playing team sports. Well, the, the, the best alternative to crumb rubber is, is grass, to, um, and we've talked with, um, there are architects around the country who design grass fields that are slightly elevated, that are properly drained, uh, that are very resistant to drought, uh, that require little or no pesticides. That, that's one option. And the other option is that there are some newer synthetic materials that are coming along that appear to be less toxic, less hazardous than the crumb rubber. The caveat there, though, is that most of those new substitutes have not really been very carefully tested for their safety. So we really don't know uh, what they might contain. I think, I think grass remains the best option.